This video is about DMR and the DP3400 portable radio. That's why I came outside. On a windy day in November, what you're looking at is Mall Vamai. So if any of you have done Summit on the Air, that's November Whiskey 4-4. Using one watt of DMR, I can get into Golf Bravo 7 Hotel Mike very easily. It's about six miles away. But I can also get into Golf Bravo 7 Papa November in Prestati, which is a bit of a shock, uh, since there's a big pile of granite between us. If we start with the front of the radio, it's a very solidly constructed beast. It's quite heavy. And on the front, you can see the microphone port and the speaker. Not much else to see on there. If I rotate it, you can see on the left hand side, we've got three buttons, top, middle and bottom, and then the larger push to talk, which is textured, so you can find it easily um, without looking. There's also a little ridge here for the same purpose. Rotate it again, and we see a clip on the back, which is removable, if you want to insert it into your pocket more neatly but it's quite a useful thing for keeping the radio in one place when you connect it. And at the bottom, there are the ports for slotting into the charger, um, which I'll show you in a minute. If we rotate it again, you have the port that uh, all the connectors, all the external peripherals connect to. Uh, and I'll show you those in a moment as well. Okay. If we look top down, you've got the antenna, which is screwed in like so, and surprisingly has an SMA female connector. So it's the opposite way around to conventional ham radios, uh, SMA connectors. But it's nice and solid, it's quite easy to attach, and it's waterproof. Next to that, there's another button, an orange one. Then there's a 16 position channel selector and finally there's the volume control and on off switch combined. There are advantages and disadvantages of all radios of course and the 3400 as they say is no exception. Um, it's a weatherproof radio um, which means you can use it quite confidently no matter what the conditions are but you do find that the mic picks up a lot of wind noise and that can be a limitation. It's very strongly built, but it's also quite big and a bit heavy. It's very easy to use, but it's very difficult to set up. You can't do any of the settings from the radio itself. Everything has to be programmed offline on a PC and then transferred using a special cable. Complicated by the fact that the software you need to use is proprietary um, and quite expensive to purchase. So you really need a good friend who works in the business, and there's a lot of them about um, working in DMR that are also radio amateurs, um, to do the programming for you. The radio itself has got four programmable buttons on it, which again are set up by the remote software. So you can tailor the radio to do what you particularly want it to do. It's got a very compact antenna operating on 70 SEMs, it's reasonably efficient. But the antenna is connected through an SMA-F connector, which is the opposite way around to most SMA antenna connections on ham radio. So your existing antennas won't fit. I've also had some experience with adapters, probably from China, um, which although they looked like they would work, didn't actually make electrical connections. It's got a good battery life. And when it's operating on the DMR mode, the digital mode, um, it only transmits for around half the time that you're speaking, which is a further benefit for um, battery life. However, you can only charge it through the plug-in charger. In other words, there's no extra charge socket. So if you're traveling around, the whole plug-in charger has to come with you. And I found that the on-off switch is a bit imprecise. It clicks, but only just. 
and you do find that occasionally it'll switch itself on when you're pushing it into a pocket uh, or a bag. We talk a little bit about the settings on the DP3400. It's got 32 channels, but as we've seen, it's only got a 16 channel selector. So the channels are stored in two blocks of 16, which we call upper and lower, because as you switch to the two channels, the radio makes a, an increasing or a decreasing series of tones. The four buttons I mentioned um, have two modes as well, so you can program them for short or long press, giving you effectively eight programmable buttons. And the sort of examples as you might pick for something like that, um, the orange button, that's the one on the top, you might use for toggling scanning on and off, or maybe use a long press to toggle the power output from one to four watts. On button two, I've suggested toggling the memory bank from the first 16 memories to the second 16 memories. A long press might toggle Vox on and off, etc. The DP3400 is an FM radio. Um, and when you're using it in the FM mode, each memory channel stores the transmit and the receive frequency, so operating on repeaters is no problem. It'll store the CT, CSS and the PL tone, one's a receive and the other's a transmit, um, and they're both individually programmable. You can choose the power setting for that particular channel, and that still allows you to toggle the power setting using the external buttons if you wish. And you can attach something called a scan list to each memory. So each memory can have a list of other memories that when you press, when you press scan, um, the scan list is followed. So there might be four or five other memories in the scan list, allowing that particular memory to select that particular scan list. And it's possible for the scan list to automatically begin scanning as soon as you select the memory. Why would you want FM and digital in the same radio? And the fact is that the DP3400 is a commercial radio. And originally, um, everybody will be running on FM. So if Motorola want to sell an upgraded repeater, it would immediately break all the existing handsets in use and increase the costs of upgrading. So the idea is, is that when you install your first digital repeater, you switch it to FM first and progressively upgrade your handsets. Once all the handsets are upgraded, you can then switch the repeater over to digital without a gap in continuity. So it's a commercial reason. But it does mean that we get FM as well as DMR in the same radio. Why would we want to use digital radio? Well, simplest is that there's no hiss. Uh, there's no background noise listening to digital. There is a degraded audio slightly. Um, there's a very slight metallic edge to digital audio because it's heavily compressed. Because it's compressed, it sends the uh, audio in a series of packets and it can get all the audio out in half the time it takes for you to say it. Consequently, the transmitter's actually offline for half the time you're using it, and therefore you have an immediate saving of battery, uh, battery life. Once the signal's received by a repeater, because it's digital, the message can be transmitted to any other repeater in the world without any loss of quality. Having said that, um, packet loss does happen over long networks. Um, so that isn't entirely the way it works out. Digital radios will also support sending uh, and receiving text messages. The DP3400 will send text messages that you can pre-program, but of course you can't receive them because there's no screen. Um, digital systems can also transmit GPS coordinates and the DP3401 has a built-in GPS. Um, the 3400 doesn't, however. And there are some non-amateur available features on uh, DMR, which I'll mention and then never mention again. The first is that it's possible to set, select each radio to be remotely switched to transmit from the um, base unit. Similarly, base units can switch, down, switch, switch off uh, remote handheld radios. There's an emergency button function that can be programmed. And finally, um, it's possible to encrypt your messages digitally none of these features are used in the amateur network. So if we're using the DP3400 on DMR, 
each channel that you program for DMR is entered in the same way the FM channels were entered on a PC and transferred to the radio in a file called the code plug. Again, each channel has to be programmed with transmit and receive frequency. Each channel has to have a numerical colour code attached to it. Now, a colour code provides the same kind of feature that a CTCSS tone does on FM. That allows two repeaters to be on the same frequency but not interfere with one another directly or at least not receive each other's signals. You need to program a talk group into each channel as well because each DMR transmission has to be attached to a talk group which has a number and each talk group has to have a slot which is another number one or two. You can also add a scan list to each um, digital channel that you program the same way as you can FM channels and a scan list can include FM channels as well as digital channels. And you, you can also program a thing called a roaming list. What a roaming list consists of is a list of different repeaters all supporting the same talk group. At the simplest level you might put in talk group 235 for example which covers the whole of the United Kingdom. If you're going to drive in range of four or five of those repeaters, putting those five repeaters into a roaming list means the radio will switch automatically from one repeater to the next while you're monitoring that one channel without bothering you about it. There are two basic types of repeater format for DMR. You'll hear about DMR Mark, the Motorola Amateur Radio Club. And again, all DMR radios will work with DMR Mark repeaters. All the repeaters are Motorola and there's no external access to the network. So you can't connect a DMR Mark repeater to a DMR Plus repeater. DMR Plus being the other network. DMR Mark is Motorola based, DMR Plus came from the Hytera manufacturer, although there are more than Hytera repeaters involved. Again all DMR radios will work with the DMR Plus network. DMR Plus repeaters connect to each other via reflectors and in the UK the reflectors have numbers 4400 to 4403. You can access reflector 4400 from a D-Star radio by going through a D-Star reflector DCS005F and you can access other DMR Plus reflectors by using a dongle called the DV4 Mini and this provides a local hotspot for your DMR radio if you're not near uh, a repeater on the DMR network. If we look at DMR Mark briefly, as mentioned you have to select a talk group to use a repeater and the talk group you select determines where you come out of the which repeater you come out of. Each talk group has to be on either a slot 1 or slot 2 but it can't be on both and it never varies. Talk group 9 slot 2 for example tends to be the local talk group for your own repeater so anything you say on talk group 9 slot 2 is only heard on the repeater you're actually connected to. Select to set to talk group 1 slot 1 and you'll come out of all the DMR mark repeaters worldwide. That tends to be referred to as a calling channel now because as you can imagine um, it can get a bit busy. If you have a look at the Golf Bravo 7 Hotel Mike Facebook page you'll see more details on talk groups including direct dial talk groups and user activated talk groups which is a clever way of removing some of the repeaters from your conversation if they're not necessary. DMR Plus repeaters use slot 1 for local activity and further network access but they reserve talk group 9 on slot 2 for a talk group which is attached to a reflector, reflector 4400 by default 
so you can access DSTAR and DV4 Mini users, as well as other DMR Plus repeaters, by using Talk Group 9 slot 2. It is also possible, if you're connected to the repeater, to change the reflector that the repeater is using. Best to ask the local repeater owner how to do that. And I've mentioned the DV4 Mini. It's a relatively new device. It's fairly competitively priced in my view. It's a dongle that plugs into your PC and then you can use it to set up a hotspot for your DMR radio and connects you to a DMR Plus reflector. It also connects D-Star radios to D-Star reflectors and Fusion radios to Fusion uh, networks as well. But it won't do them all at the same time. And that's a quick run through of the DP3400. That's all I wanted to say about the DP3400, but I'll show you this one, which is the sister radio, the DP3600. Main difference, it's got a display, um, it's got an LCD display on the front, it's got a keypad, principally for entering in text messages, doesn't seem to do a lot else. It's got two more programmable buttons at the bottom, and of course it's got a thousand memories instead of the 32. DP3400 has. Because the 3600 has got so many more memories, it takes a lot more programming. And you might like to have a look at the Golf Bravo 7 Hotel Mike webpage on Facebook for some more details on what you can do with talk groups on the DMR Mark system. I can't demonstrate the engaged tone because there aren't any engaged signals around. But if you try and operate and you're out of coverage, you get this. And the engaged tone is the same beep, only interrupted. If you've got this for, you can email me on golf whiskey zero tango quebec mike at yahoo.co.uk or Twitter at golf whiskey zero tango quebec mike. Finally, if this video has been of interest, do like it by pressing the button. It does make a difference. And if you hate it, then tell everybody on air. Seven threes. My location is northeast Wales in the town of Mould, which was called The Mould on some old English maps. <laughs>